My name's Joe Turnbull, I've been fishing for well over 30 years and I've recently joined the Ridge Monkey crew, which I'm really, really pleased about. What we're talking about today is bait boats. Basically, bait boats have been around for a long, long time. But over the sort of recent years, you know, production's moved on, um, affordability's moved on. So we've got our own boat, which we've had out for some time. It's called the Hunter 750. It's a great little boat, very low profile. You can get up to a kilo of bait in it, maybe even a little bit more, and it goes out in all different weather conditions. I've never really used boats a lot, to be fair. A recent I've realised in certain situations how effective they can be in people's angling. I'm going to show you exactly what I do with a boat and how I've been getting used to it. So now I've got the Hunter 750, it's been a compulsory part of my kit. Not only is it really compact, but it's mega light. I get quite a lot of questions actually, people ask me whether it's any good for choppy water, because obviously, you know, we fish in all sorts of circumstances. Been fishing a, an 18 acre reservoir, which can get really choppy at, at, at times, and it has really proved to be a great little asset. The range is absolutely fantastic. I'll tell you a little story, which is not great angling, but it just proves how good the range is. I put the bait boat out and dropped some bait. I got an urgent call from a mate who was a swim up from me, who says to me, quick, can you come and help, come and help? I've got a fish on and it, I'm in a bit of a mess. Runs up to the swim, helps my mate, my mate out. We looks over the other side of the 18 acre reservoir and my boat is in the swim opposite. A good two, 300 meters away. I couldn't believe it, it was sitting there. I was like, oh my God. I get to the control, connects with the boat and it comes back straight away, not a problem. So the range is amazing. Battery life, this is another thing. Battery life is just incredible. I've used it for over two to three days. In fact, I've been there a week sort of fishing on and off and I didn't have to charge the batteries up at all. The other good thing is you can buy spare batteries as well for it, which is you know perfect if you're away for a week or so, or if you're going abroad, they're great as well. And they also quick charge as well, two to three hours max, I think, before they're actually um, you know fully charged. So. so also with the Hunter 750, you get the joystick remote, which is so easy. It's a one-handed remote. I get quite a lot of questions. People ask me funny enough I'm finding it difficult to steer it but the, the thing is it's been deliberately made sensitive and the reason for that is because when you go into little snags or if you go into little spots like I've put them today the boat can spin it on, on a 360 axis more or less to come back again the one thing you don't want is to go into into a snag and have to reverse it out or try to get that boat out the way it goes in and the way it comes out is perfect so that's how it's made so sensitivity is the key with that control and it works perfectly every single time So the three rods are out in place and I've already just had a bleep on the left hand rod so if any luck it might even go off. The boat has made it so easy it's been just fantastic. You wouldn't normally be able to cast, you know, put the baits where I've cast them and with that said I just want to say don't be silly with it, you know, make sure that they're not in stupid places where you wouldn't normally, you know, cast. The right rod is tucked around some lily pads, in fact in between some lily pads which is a really nice spot. The middle one is on the other side of the, um, the same set of pads if you like but it's a big old bunch of lily pads and the left hand side one's tucked under a really nice overhang up against some roots. Each one of them's got a different baiting situation. So on the left one, I've got just pellet there with a bit of a uh, fossil over the top. The middle one, I've got just hemp seed with a bit of fossil over the top of that. And the right one, I've got just link boily with a bit of fossil over the top of that. So three different completely baiting, situ different baiting situations, but three very similar hook baits. They're all link pop-ups with our uni clips as well. All in all, everything's set. All I've got to do now is sit back, fingers crossed, we'll have a fish. So one of the things that I do a lot in my angling, which makes me consistent, is I always keep my feed going in over my hook baits. If you watch any good angler, like a good match angler, they'll always tell you it's about the feed that goes in. With a bait boat, it's quite difficult to put bait back over the same spot. Obviously, you know where you're fishing. You can wrap up to that spot, hit the clip on your, on your rods, and then you know where you're fishing. But to put bait back onto that spot is a bit tricky. What I normally do is I wrap my a mini spawn, or a spawn, whichever you want, an empty one, wrap my rods up to the same distance as I've got the rods. I'll take my boat out and then drop that 
bait over the spot so I know exactly where I'm fishing and over the top of my hook baits. And I'll literally just reel this back in empty. And the reason why I do it with a, with a little spom or a spom is that if I was to do it with a lead, which you can do, obviously the lead's gonna drop back into where you're fishing. It can disturb the spot, which you don't want to do. So this just creates no noise and no disturbance. 